forty five million dollars settlement indeed for a man paralyzed in a police van watch. Hold up, okay? All right, what's up? Randy Cox was at a block party when New Haven police arrived in response to a weapons complaint. Officers arrested Cox, who they say is an ex-felon and was carrying a firearm illegally. As they were transporting him to jail, Authorities say Officer Oscar Diaz was speeding and came to a sudden stop to avoid an accident. As a result, Cox's head is slammed against the back of the van, which had no seatbelt. I can't hear you. Despite Cox's repeated calls for help, it took the officer almost four minutes to check on him. Can you move at all? I can't move. Before calling an ambulance to meet him at the police station. When the van arrived, several other officers were waiting and began berating Cox to get out. Uh-huh. Move your leg. Sit up. Move over. Why are you not listening, bro? Sit up. I can't move. You're not even trying. <laughs> About three minutes later, they dragged Cox feet first out of the van. What's going on? Huh? You ain't cracking. You just drank too much. Before officers forcefully hoisted him into a wheelchair. Cox is processed and dragged into a holding cell about 10 minutes after the van arrived at the station. He's perfectly fine. Can I put these on? He was placed on the floor where an officer shackled his legs, but he couldn't move as he was paralyzed from the chest down. Difficult to watch. And when you learn more of the details I'm about to unpack, well, see what you think. $45 million settlement has been reached for the mistreatment. That's an understatement of Richard Randy Cox, the man paralyzed in the back of that police van following a June 2022 arrest in New Haven, Connecticut. According to police, this marks the nation's largest misconduct settlement in history. I even hate the word misconduct. It's far beyond. Video footage showed Cox begging for help. The officers accusing him of being drunk. Not believing that he was injured, police put him in that wheelchair you saw, brought him to a cell where they waited for an ambulance. New Haven's mayor, Justin Alicker, said in a statement, the New Haven Police Department has instituted a comprehensive set of reforms, updated its policies and procedures on the transfer of people in custody and required department-wide training on duty to intervene. Officers involved are being held accountable by the police department and in court. 30 million of the total settlement will be covered by New Haven's insurance. The remainder will be paid by the city, according to the news release. CBS News with the reporting here. Carl Jacobson became chief of police in July 2022. The month following that incident, replacing city chief administrative officer Regina Rush Kittle. She was acting chief until Jacobson was sworn in. During that time, he said, Mr. Cox was mistreated. He should have received medical attention immediately. He continued, we can't defend anything that was released. Uh, Can you defend what wasn't released? There's There's even more, I'm sure, here. Five officers involved charged with second degree reckless endangerment, cruelty to persons. They were identified as officers Oscar Diaz, Ronald Presley, Jocelyn Lavender, Luis Rivera, Sergeant Betsy Seguay. Lavender and Rivera were later fired for violating multiple officer conduct rules related to the case. So this is clearly disgusting what we were afforded the opportunity to see after the fact is disgusting. I'm too disgusted with the mayor's statement, and I don't quite know if I can articulate why, Ravana, but it just was so matter of fact, so callous. I don't want to hear about your insurance. It's the taxpayers who are going to pay, whether it's your insurance or not, okay? We're, We're not dumb enough to buy that part of the statement, and I don't know why it's even in there. I really don't. I don't want to hear about reform and training and we. It's not about training, and it's not about reform, it's about humanity. And when you don't care about the black guy 
unbelted in the back of the van as you slam on the brakes. Okay, I'm waiting to see some some dash cam footage, by the way, Ravana, that shows that you were avoiding an accident. Okay, I'm not buying it, and it could be true. But you have trained this journalist, host, capacity today, commentator, not to believe anything you say. This is disgusting, again. Right. and. You're right about the statement too. It is there is a thing in there where it feels like he's trying to say, "Don't worry, it's not all going to be on you. You, it's not all of the people of the city's burden to pay out this settlement." When in reality, that is it is that okay. And and you guys were wrong, and you're still not footing the bill for how you messed up. And you know that's how these settlements are paid out. It's I don't think it's the right way to do it. But it's the way apparently to get these victims the money, which I think, you know, there's a concept, I've talked about this before, but there's a concept in the law called being made whole. That's what a settlement, that's what, you know, damages are supposed to do. They're mm -hmm. supposed to make the person whole. $45 million isn't enough. There's no, <laughs> there's no amount of money that can make this victim whole. The traumatizing that he has, the trauma he's experienced through this, the trauma his family has experienced. The care that he's going to require for the rest of his life, the tools that he's going to need, the the uh, relearning, you know, <laughs> how to move, relearning, you know, uh, different ways to do skills differently, things that you know able-bodied people take for granted every single day. There's no, he'll never walk again. There's no way to make him whole. Forty-five million dollars won't make him whole. Mm -hmm. There's not a dollar amount that will. But I'm glad that he's received this settlement. It should be more, and it never should have happened in the first place. And that's that's the statement that these cities should be saying. This never ever should have happened. It's our fault that it did. Never should have <laughs> happened. Never should have happened, and I'm sick of the second degree charge. I'm sick of the reckless endangerment, cruelty to persons. They took him for a Freddy Gray rough ride. That's what they did. I believe that's premeditated. It's known throughout policing, even after Freddy Gray. And that's what they did. And I don't want to hear about two of the officers who were fired for misconduct related. What misconduct would it be? Where you pick, I have no formal training, Ravana, as an EMT. But I do know that if I happen upon an accident scene and someone's badly injured and the car's not on fire, what do they tell you? Don't move them, okay? Don't, don't, you, you could paralyze someone. This is just, really? Unless this is called out, like you said, back to the statement. Where this police chief says, let me tell you how scummy this is. I want details here so I know that you actually do get it. And you're not standing with them and reading something that your communications person put in front of you, okay? Because that's what it felt like. Mm -hmm. And the time the officer spent berating him instead of getting him proper medical care, you don't know how much function could have been saved while they were, uh, you know. Right. Picking him up, throwing him around, forcing him to sleep on the ground in the cell. I mean, it's way beyond cruelty. I mean, it's just they don't even see him as a human being, and they're so quick to accuse him of lying. And that's really telling about how you know police departments view uh, citizens, particularly black people, and <laughs> that they're supposed to be serving and protecting. They don't even see them. As as human beings, that's just something to throw on the floor, and it's mortifying. And that statement didn't even come close to addressing the the evil nature of what we witnessed. It's evil. Uh, I have a family member who was transported to get medical treatment three times a week, and they put her on a stretcher with care, a two man team. They put her in the back of their transport vehicle. And then one of the crew persons drives and the other stays in the back with her to make sure. I asked one time, oh, I didn't realize you stay in the back. Yeah, we gotta make sure that you know she stays secure back here and makes it safely to her journey. It's just what we're trained to do. No belt, handcuffed, and there you go. And everybody's actually like, you need to change policies. And you need to hire human beings. Mm -hmm.
okay? You need to hire human beings. I'll give you the last word. I think that 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 is exactly it. That is dehumanization of the people that police interact with. It is the the abuse of power, and you know, there's no training. There's no training that out. If someone's able to behave that cruelly, that's a part of who they are, and they never should have passed the psyche eval <laughs> that police departments are supposed to give their new hires to become a police officer in the first place. In this day and age, qualified immunity remains one of the deadliest threats to US citizens. There is no doubt, and as witnessed daily, that as long as police officers in our uncivilized nation are encouraged to murder without consequences, we can expect no improvements to our life expectancy. According to the United States National Academy of Sciences, and I quote, Police in the United States kill far more people than do police in other advanced industrial democracies. To date, Colorado, New Mexico, and New York have repealed qualified immunity, and we remain hopeful that in the near future, serial killers with badges will be held accountable for the unreasonable execution of citizens. Furthermore, the Academy of Sciences additionally says, journalists have stepped into this void and initiated a series of systematic efforts to track police-involved killings. And I bid to you, my fellow citizens, that this rampage of certified murders must be stopped for the safety of our children, handicapped, and veterans. Please support the new Institute for Justice and their Americans Against Qualified Immunity campaign. Check them out at www.aaqi.com. You'll also find them on Facebook and Twitter. That's Americans Against Qualified Immunity. That's all for now, my brothers and sisters. Stay safe and always film the police.